Hello there and welcome back. In this video I'm going to show you how you can get started with Flame. Basically this is a Python library which allows you to create a standard framework to develop and deploy your APIs. And let's jump right into it. I have this coding folder and here what I would like to do is to create a virtual environment flaming and after activating the virtual environment I will install the Flamma <coughs> all right and as every uh, decent hello world or introduction video this should also start with uh, with the hello world application so we are going to use the NeoVim <coughs> editor and I would like to create a new folder and call this hello world and inside the hello world come on manage and let's delete the hello world and let's add another one. Hello world. Nerd tree. Refresh root. Oh, <laughs> so I'm currently uh, learning NeoVim as you can see. So hello world forward slash. All right, so now we have created the folder and let's call this hello.py. And technically, mm, if you specify a name with the forward slash, it is going to create a folder. If you provide anything else, it will be treated as a file. All right, so now what we would like to do is to import from Flama the Flama class and we create our Flama instance and we can specify a title which is called I don't know hello world and we can specify a version which is going to be 1.0 and the description which is going to be just a demo all right let's see oh you cannot see it so this is the description and um, <clears throat> after that it's pretty similar to how flask or django or not django falcon or similar web frameworks work so basically we create a function with the decorator of app.route we specify the context route and let's call this index and here what we would like to do is to return a message and call this hello world and basically we if we want to use this framework to its full potential, what we have to do is to specify the doc, doc strings for each function, class, and so on. So we could say that the tags is welcome, hello world, etc. And we have the summary and basically return a message and we have the description so nothing extra this is just a demo and the response is is going to be 200 and the description welcome message 
All right. Now let's save it and uh, try to run it. So in order to run it, we are going to use the Windows Terminal and say flamma.run and we have to specify the following way flamma run hello world dot hello column app no schema library is installed let's see what are we missing so schema library uh -huh. let's do this flama pydentic pip install flama pydentic and we are missing the sql alchemy module so sql alchemy okay and attempting to bind an address only one usage is allowed oh i think there is still an instance of uvicorn running hmm let's start at the end find string 8000 no then let's give it the help message and server port Eighty, eighty. Wow! So that's it, and basically we have the response from this uh, server that we just created. And uh, let's see. yeah we have it. if we want we have also an option to run this application similar to how we would run basically a flask app so if name equals main app that run and the host is going to be 0.0.0, .0, .0 and the port is going to be 8080 and the debug <coughs> is hmm, server host server port and we want to do this the following way hmm <laughs> We also import flamma. Okay. And we call the flamma that run with the flamma app equals to app. And this should be it. Yeah, it's installed in a virtual environment. That's fine. And let's go to the hello world and run the hello.py. Wow. As you can see, localhost. It's working. Cool. Yeah, we have seen that. And what's more important in this case of the Flamovel application we can use the docs context route and technically this should give us uh, 
the appropriate output. So let's run it this way. Okay. And it is not working. But this should give us back this information. Yeah, we have it here. So we should be able to see the dogs. Ah, <laughs> okay, so let me scroll a bit. Technically, as you can see, we have this endpoint list and basically it shows us that we are able to return a message and we could send an API request, get the result. So it's, uh, it's working pretty neatly and we also have a schema or API error definition and throughout these videos you are going to see how you can basically create your own full-blown application. But for now that was all. See you in the next one.